with an average winter low of minus 10 Fahrenheit or minus 25 Celsius, Ulaanbaatar is considered the coldest capital in the world. In 2004, 367 people froze to death on its streets. Donations of warm clothing alleviate the cold of winter, enabling poor children to attend school and adults to seek work. There's a great deal of corruption in Mongolia, and my thought was to deliver clothing directly to the uh, children and the uh, elderly people that needed it, directly without any middlemen. And we've carried through on that, and this is what makes FIRE different than all the other organizations. We hand the clothes directly to the people. This small, Arizona-based, non-governmental, non-profit organization is dedicated to providing much-needed resources and support to the world's disempowered and poorest. Every fall, FIRE volunteers hand-deliver warm winter clothing, medical and educational supplies, and provide medical training all over Mongolia. Many of FIRE's distributions take place in the crowded, semi-permanent gear districts that have gradually surrounded the city in the last 15 years. These gear districts are not connected to city water or sewerage and have sparse electricity. Living conditions are desperate for those just trying to survive. When I first started working with FIRE, our main emphasis was on the street children and orphans that were living in these appalling conditions. So I think that was a real motivating cause for people in Flagstaff to get together, collect clothing, and volunteer their time and energy towards this cause. Another one of FIRE's recipient in the capital is the Lotus Center, a colorful orphanage run by a devoted Australian teacher who has been helping street children for the last 13 years. My name's Didi Kalika. The Lotus Center is it's really a home for children from newborns to now some of the older girls are around 23. And there's around 135 kids living here at the moment. We do concentrate more on girls, but now we do have a lot of boys actually. I think for the girls it's worse. They have a much harder time in the street because they, they get abused. I saw quite young girls you know, drifting into that lifestyle of, of, of being prostitution. Now actually Lotus Centre has some of the second generation street children, the children of some of these people, these young people have been in the street for many years. Most of these children come off the street by way of the police from the Address Identification Centre. Dee Dee's simple yet cared for and loving refuge is a welcome sight amidst the squalor of the Gare district in which it is located. With no paved roads outside the few largest cities, reaching rural delivery locations and hospitals turns into a very, very rough ride. Just covering 60 miles in three hours is considered a success. Fire has been gradually turning its focus to the remote rural communities of Mongolia, which are often neglected by aid organizations due to the many logistical difficulties and cost involved in reaching them. During one of our house-to-house -house distributions today, there was a family of seven living in a gear that they had to rent because they couldn't afford $300 even for a used one. Not only could they not afford to buy their own gear, they only had half the felt insulation needed to cover it for the winter, which was just around the corner. To top it off, their oldest daughter did not have enough warm clothing to be able to go to school. Mongolia is very strict with their clothing requirements. If children are not dressed warmly enough, they're sent home. When we come across families like this, I really wish we had the extra money to be able to buy the felt and firewood and coal they need to get through the winter. But I'm grateful that we at least are able to give them some clothes and blankets and help their children get to school. My name is Dagas. I have three children, but only one still lives with me. The other I had to send away because I can't afford to care for them. My daughter is in a school for orphans, and my other son lives with my sister. My wife died last year after being sick and bedridden for 10 years. I had to quit my job to care for her and spend all our money. I sold the glass from my window and the wood from my floor to buy food for me and my son. And today, 
We are bringing in sand to level out the floor to sleep on. I need food, firewood, and coal, but still, these clothes are so important to us. I can't thank the people enough. What can I do for them?